welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, take Hello, that midweek everyone. break, and talk about some of the fun, fantastic things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, penguins, and this week, cameras. Pedro, go ahead, get it out oh, of your system, yes. buddy. I know, you go, I know you're going to do it. <laughs> yes, yes, I am going to do it because I got a package from the colonies. Yes, a certain uh, mirror from Shetrealm decided to provide me with a nice old uh, DSLR camera. It's in very good shape, actually. I already took some pictures with it. He also decided to include some stickers in hidden places, including the uh, Microsoft Lens uh, Loves Linux sticker. Microsoft and Lens <laughs> Linux. Yes. Lens yeah. Linux, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a t-shirt. Jill, what have you yes. been up to? Oh boy. Um I've I've been since Monday. I've been enjoying watching the Open Source Summit and Scotland keynote talks. Uh, Greg Crow Hartman is filling in for Linus Torvalds, uh, who normally um keynotes, and he will be speaking today and talking about our first story in the news, and it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Right on. <laughs> uh, I've been playing around messing with fire, you know, making Linux do things it's not supposed to. As one does, and I'm making progress on kind of a podcasting 101. So you have the bad idea that you want to get into podcasting and you use Linux. So how do I <laughs> save you from the six years of treachery that I figured out? And that's a series that I'm working on and it's going to be coming up because it's going to save some time. <laughs> Yay. Ultimately, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a thing for Pedro and Jordan. So anytime they ask me a question, it's like, go watch a video. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Big news this week. Linus is back. Oh, yeah. Uh, that yeah. didn't take long. Uh, so, yeah, the big news is that, uh, of course, Linus Torvalds is um, coming back. Well, he is back. Uh, Greg Crow Hartman basically handed like the merge window to uh, Linus, which was um, well, it was the bit of the uh, the kernel development that he usually stayed out of. But this time around, since he took the rest of the time off to go and figure out how he could be, eh, you know, less cussy to people, uh, he mm -hmm. is now uh, taking over the. Um, like the merge window and it's the busiest time as he himself says so it remains to be seen exactly what uh 420 will bring about and um mm -hmm. i do have a question All how right. long <laughs> how long until mr linus torvalds uh goes on a cussless but equally as scathing tirade about some developer doing something that it doesn't like <laughs> how long Aww. you can do you can hurt people a lot better if you don't resort to using negative language i mean if you're creative about yes. it I, I mean and listen mental scars they don't heal they're also oh bad. yeah no they stick with you <laughs> here's what i really yeah. want to know though will he finally get back to making his tech tip videos Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrong, Linus. <laughs> oh, okay. That other one. Oh, we're talking about you. Yeah. But no, I mean, he definitely, he, he's like, hey, I set up an email filter and he, it's very primitive right now. He probably, like, you know, got the big ones out. Of, and it's like, okay, so maybe those won't go out and it'll have to be adapted. Uh, I think this is good news. You know, the outrage yep. train kind of pulled in. And they're like, rah, and it mm -hmm. pulled out of the station. So mm -hmm. I think the kernel developers can get back to work, Jill. Yeah, so, uh, of course, with uh, Linus coming back, a new code of conduct has been adopted. And um, as we talked about, uh, Greg Pro Hartman, he, he said a very, very, I thought, a very powerful statement. By providing a document in the kernel source tree that shows that all people, developers and maintainers alike, will be treated with respect and dignity while working together. We help to create a more welcome community to those newcomers, which our very future depends on if we all wish to see this project succeed at its goals. Yeah, so very true. And you know, what I, what I got about, um, I read several articles on, on, on uh, all these happenings, of course. And um, to me, you know, the Linux kernel is revolutionary. And it and its communities are unlike anything else in the world. We're all here 
because of this community. And we have to protect its uniqueness in a professional and united way and um, just uh, uh, come together and uh, give each other respect. And um, what was really cool is that that um, Linus met uh, quietly with uh, Linux's uh, top 40 or so developers at the Maintainers su Summit, which was held in concert with the Open Source Summit Europe in Scotland. So as I was watching all these keynotes, I was getting all this, this wonderful information and, and details. And um, I, what's I really, just thought it was like you were yeah. going to end that. But <laughs> then you started throwing chairs. <laughs> no. Screaming developers, developers, developers. <laughs> develop. No, 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 no. Not we need to indoctrinate Linus. Linus into the, uh, the world of the chair qa -zition. <laughs> Yes. And uh, yeah, so what's, what's awesome about this is now uh, Craig Crow Hartman has, has uh, rights to edit the kernel tree. And uh, now he can share that task with Linus, and they may may even hire some um, other kernel maintainers to help them, and that would be wonderful. It would give it would give Linus a break, help out a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. right on, right on. <laughs> Good news. Uh, another thing that happened this week: four nineteen. It's ready for prime time. Yes, it's ready for your face. Yes. Oh yeah. So we have a new Linux kernel, uh, four dot nineteen, and um, there's oh boy, uh, <laughs> one of the <laughs> this article is awesome because it's not just about the Linux kernel 4.19 release, but about the updates to Google Chrome, Lightworks, and Etcher. But first, we're going to talk about the Linux kernel. So um, uh, Linux 4.19 debuts a Raspberry Pi voltage driver, support for the Lenovo calculator key on select ThinkPad models, and users with a creative Recon 3D sound card now get proper Linux support. Yay! And I'm very happy about that because several of these I have, and the latter, the sound card, makes me very happy because I have one. <laughs> And uh, I know uh, both Ben and uh, Pedro also had something to say about the, the Linux kernel as well and some of its changes. <laughs> yes. Well, one of the things, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. we want to point out 419. Unfortunately, 419's LTS, not 420. Oh, so close. I think that was deliberate. I know. It's like, no, we're I, not going to make the 420 the, listen, the LTS. Man, it we're it gave just me a little not. bit of the sads. I was like, come yes. on, 420, <laughs> make it an LTS. Uh, better networking with uh, Cake, the queue management algorithm so that's something to play with and look forward to preliminary yeah. wi-fi support for wi-fi 6 that's 802.11 8x mm -hmm. that's kind of neat good and luck finding a laptop that supports that in the wild uh, give it a week man. give it a week uh, new asynchronous <laughs> io polling interface and uh i for one as somebody who has entered the wild and wacky world of man i gotta stick with an LTS because things have to work nowadays. I look forward to running it in possibly 2023, 2021, maybe if I'm lucky. Yeah, no, it's uh, the big thing for me that happened with uh, kernel 419, and this was already present in the release candidates, was the Steam Box. Because as it turns out, mm -hmm. the 419, even though it's not in, you know, big bold letters in the release notes, it finalizes support for the AMD Raven Ridge APUs. That's, of course, the um, the Ryzen 3 2200G, the Ryzen 5 um, 2400G, and the Ryzen 7... Uh, it's whatever it's called. It's the one that's on Jordan's laptop, that one. Uh, and yeah, so basically, nowadays, you can just... If you have a Ryzen system like that with one of those APUs... You install a Linux distro that has kernel uh, 419 out of the box. Good luck with that. And boom, it's it works. Fedora works. I can tell you that for sure. You know, I will definitely give it a try yeah. on this box. I'm always curious because mm -hmm. uh, I have the Tomahawk B350 chipset. And yes. basically anything after 415 right now, has a conniption fit with USB 3.1. I mean, it's just like, ah, I don't know what this is. And sometimes <laughs> it figures it out. Uh, I'll try it and mm -hmm. we'll see. I'll report back because, uh, hey, man, mainline, that's one good thing with Canonical. You can just pop them in, yeah. pop them out. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, what do we have up next? Mozilla, they're yeah. doing a thing. VPN. Oh, yes. Yay. Who, who was it who found the <laughs> article in English because I was too lazy to? Uh, be the first to know what's coming up. This is right from their blog. They're testing a new way to keep you safe. And what they're really testing is, hey, man, 
we need to explore alternate ways to fund the Mozilla project, which is good. Great idea. One of their ideas is to have a VPN service with Firefox using Proton, Proton VPN, mm -hmm. and how they're going to roll this out. They're saying, hey, man, a small random group of U.S.-based uh, Firefox users will be presented with an offer to purchase a monthly subscription to the VPN service, which, you know, it's going to run you 10 wet, stinky American caches. And, uh, okay, funding Mozilla is awesome. Give them money. That's brilliant. Just $10. Mm -hmm. With a VPN. Huge fan of VPNs. This is a great thing. I just, the wording of that of, hey, we're going to give you the opportunity to give us $10 a month, that doesn't come across very good. Um, no. Especially no, if you're going to be testing. Does. You're paying for the privilege yeah. of testing. And $10 <laughs> is $2 more than the plus package from Proton VPN. And one thing, mm -hmm. I'm not knocking anything. I'm just saying, as somebody who does payment processing, I know what a Stripe is. The average person, because that's how they're going to be processed. They, they don't know what Stripe is. No idea. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems <laughs> like, hey, man, you got to try it though, right? Yeah, it, 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 it is more revenue coming into Mozilla, and that's that's not a bad thing. I'm 100% with you on that. But 10 bucks a month? That seems yeah, a bit much uh, considering <laughs> I paid, yeah, 52 bucks for private internet access for two years. Two years! Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and private internet access, they're not like some shady VPN service. They actually contribute to the open source world and they've helped mm -hmm. many open source projects in the past. Uh, remember when Krita got in trouble because they didn't do their taxes right and they all of a sudden had to pay like 20,000 euros? PIA came out and said, here you go, we'll fund you. Mm -hmm. And they did. And it's uh, that right there is like, okay, that is a very good community. And it's um, it's a very good decision to have your company contribute back to the community that's basically using and abusing your project to everything that they can find. I'm not saying that, you know, don't help Mozilla. They're being greedy. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Just, you know, be mindful of your the own money. The thing is, I think the biggest also, thing is... Also, support Linux Pedro. Gamecast on Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Quit <laughs> chilling, man. Jeez. Uh, here's the, do I, I, don't, I don't even have him. Okay. Gee, all right, fine. You happy, Pedro? Are you happy? Yeah, all right. Um, by when. <laughs> this is just poorly framed. I think worded better... Mm -hmm. For me, and listen, I'm, I'm just somebody who does, I, I talk on the internet, so pay no attention to what I say, is like, hey, would you like to support Mozilla? And we're going to throw in some free VPN on top of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works better yeah. than how this is worded. Am I crazy, Jill? Yes. Jess? Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, thank you for agreeing <laughs> with me. I'm absolutely not. <laughs> no, you're not crazy. No they are. <laughs> Mozilla, beta testing something you have to pay for. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so, anyways, but yes, see more early access. See more. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is is a Proton VPN, which is of course a lot of people know them because of uh, Proton Mail, the encrypted email service, which is very easy to use, and we talked about it last week. Um, but uh, to this point, Opera Opera web browser offers free VPN web browsing, and of course, the Tor browser does. Now I know mm -hmm. this, of course, this this um, Proton VPN will be a much much uh, more robust and configurable VPN service, but you can ar already use a free VPN service on other browsers. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. if you are, uh, most likely nowadays you probably are already paying for another VPN service, and most likely yeah. they have a little teeny tiny Firefox extension that you could just load yes. up and it will load for that Firefox session. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I mean, I like the idea. If you think about it as, Hey man, I want to support the Mozilla foundation mm -hmm. and I'm getting mm -hmm. some free VPN on the side. Yeah. But it's not free though. <laughs> well, if I'm just, I'm yeah. just saying, Hey man, I'm going to give them 10 bucks a month to, yeah, no. Mozilla. If you're uh, if you're on the mindset that's like, yeah, okay, I am going to help Mozilla develop the Fox. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ten bucks a month. That's that's fair. 
They, it's a, if it's a browser that you use constantly, yeah, yes, constantly. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Pedro, explain <laughs> to me. Here's a problem. <laughs> I've been shopping for like a personal tablet. I'm like, I don't know what I want. And I want a decent one. And the entire world's like, man, we don't make tablets anymore. You want a tablet? Get an iPad. Those things are like $13,000. If you want an Android tablet, <laughs> suck it. They're not around. Get a Chromebook, basically. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, even Google's like, hey, man, if you want a tablet, it's going to be running Chrome OS. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. probably going to be a thing. I didn't know this, but apparently uh, sharing folders, not, not, not a thing. No. No, it isn't. No. Uh, so uh, in Chrome OS, you could, say, mount a Samba share over the network, but you could not share, for the life of you, a local mm -hmm. folder with another system that's also natively installed. So with the, uh, you know, the advent of Linux apps coming to Chrome OS, finally, with Chrome OS 71, they will be enabling you to right-click uh, when you go to the Chrome OS file browser, you right-click, you share, and that folder will be available to all of the Linux apps because they are containerized. They're virtualized of sorts. So um, you will be able to share whichever contents of that folder you happen to have much more easily. Uh, you could do it in the past. You just have to enable developer mode and you'd have to do everything else. Well, that's, um, you know, because of the Linux apps and everyone going, yes, please. Oh, yes. Please give us the Linux apps. They decided, all right, you can share your folders and let those apps access the um, the contents of those folders. And that that's good. That that's just a positive thing. It's kind of annoying that it's this late, but it's there now. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I actually I was really really surprised, honestly, that folder sharing wasn't wasn't um, set up at default with Christini. Mm -hmm. um, that just seems very odd because all virtual machines <laughs> have folder sharing. So yeah. I was surprised it <laughs> took them this long and I hadn't realized it because I don't have a Chromebook I can I can use this on. So <laughs> it's too old. <laughs> so I haven't been able to test it. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's there because uh, that's going to be the future of tablet devices and of course, tablets with built-in keyboards called Chromebooks. Uh, you will have the detachable ones. I'm pretty sure Asus will. Oh, look, it's a Transformer TF 700 and something. There well, you I mean, go. Listen, it's a tablet it, with a if we gotta keyboard be honest, attachment. we, we got to wait for Chrome <laughs> OS to become a little more um, touch friendly because right now it's junk. Um, it's passable. No, it's not. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Your Yay. definition of passable terrifies me, Pedro. I, I said just passable. I didn't say good. I didn't say great. I didn't say perfect. Uh, I said passable. All right. Maximum uh, opus. Yes. This is awesome. So this will maybe help my voice sound better. I'm on uh, Discord. <laughs> so uh, anyways, uh, Opus version 1.3 has been released with improved sound quality and bandwidth improvements. And what's really neat in the article, you can actually listen to samples of version 1.2 and uncompressed audio and and you and you definitely hear a difference um opus which is developed by the ziff foundation org foundation is an open source lossy audio coding format which is used for internet streaming and is the backbone of many of our favorite applications under linux and uh, one of the things they added um, in this version was ambisonics for immersive 3D audio soundtracks, which will be really, really, really great with uh, 360 videos and uh, VR. And everyone uses this codec. Um, um, this, th this release will bring great improvements to the audio quality of many of our favorite apps that use Aug Vorbis. Matroska Video, WebM, or MPEG TS encoding and decoding, including FFmpeg, our, our backend framework, Firefox, Kden Live, VLC, and SteamOS, which uses it for the streaming. Mm -hmm. And this should also, as I said earlier, improve the sound quality in Discord, which is currently using Opus version 1.2. So th this should come with a whole list of improvements um, for all of our video and audio encoding needs. Mm -hmm. Yay! And um, let's uh, see. Uh, no, it's uh, I'm absolutely one hundred percent with you on that one, Jill. Uh, the uh, yeah, 
Like Opus mm -hmm. as it is, it drives a lot of audio lot. through a lot of different <laughs> hard uh, different software and hardware as well, but mostly software. And seeing it improved, well, uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope that all of the maintainers and the developers are jumping on this. It's like, okay, new stuff, bring it, gimme. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. You're going to see it updated. I mean, anytime you're going to be using WebRTC, which is effectively everything. Everything. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> good, good, good. I listened. Uh, you can genuinely, like, especially the ultra loop bit, bit, bit rate stuff. Yes. <laughs> Passable, as Pedro says. <laughs> 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 All right, Canonical. Um, <laughs> yeah. Canonical gave us some digits. Oh yes, all the stats, <laughs> and they are kind of impressive, kind of curious. Yeah, mm, <laughs> a little bit weird. Not what you'd expect. So, this is for eighteen oh four LTS, and you can opt in. How many people opt in? Sixty six percent. Two thirds. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Real virtual mm -hmm. machines, uh, physical VM, unknown. Uh, mostly physical, mm -hmm. a little bit VM, and a lot of unknown. Spooky Halloween <laughs> statistics. I don't know, Matt. So what is that? Like the Windows subsystem for Linux? Maybe. 80% <laughs> clean installs. 80% uh, upgrades. South America and uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Space Africa. In Russia. Mm -hmm. Brazil. 59% <laughs> so. in English, 7% with Spanish, others French, Portuguese, Chinese, German, Russian, Italian, and Polish at 1%, rounding that off. Not mm -hmm. surprising. 98% AMD 64, which is everything these days. 99% uh, X11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's that that I found very interesting. People I think are they're rounding that, that down. Yeah. I know I said this yeah. on Saturday, but I think they're rounding that down. <laughs> <laughs> because 1% uh, Wayland? Really? 1%, uh, mm -hmm. 94%. One screen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else we have. Uh, 1920 by 1080. Hugely the most popular screen size. Uh, 8 by yeah. 6 still coming in because of virtual <laughs> machines. You oh, yeah, that. that's the default. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, 3840 by 2160 is only in the 1%. Huh. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I am kind of shocked to see 1680 by 1050 because that was like my first uh, ultra wide, well, like widescreen monitor back in the day. I think I paid mm -hmm. like eight or nine hundred dollars for it. It was like 23 mm. inches. And 1610 is very popular in the enterprise market. So if you have a company that's actually using Ubuntu, mm -hmm. that's where that's coming from. Or, yeah. you know, people coming home and going like, oh, these monitors are going in the bin. Mind if I, uh, you know, take them? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Jill, what's that RAM looking like? Yeah, so this is... Uh... Um, really cool. Um, 51% of installs only have uh, one to four gigs of RAM. And Lots also up. 79, <laughs> yeah, 79% of installs have only uh, 499 gigabytes uh, of storage space or less. And this also proves that Linux, you know, uses less resources and is more memory efficient than other operating systems. <laughs> you in, can run it on older hardware. <laughs> unless it's on a lap. Well, I don't know. I, I will argue with like a laptop with power savings. And if you can afford to not use old hardware, the better because you're going to use a lot yeah. less power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you have to be no, like you power efficiency nowadays <laughs> yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Prime target. <laughs> if you run XFCE or Flexbox like I do, or a window maker, you can get away with it. <laughs> well, what we're talking about, Jill, is like old power supplies that are like 4% efficient. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, I need my system to work at like 100 watts at most. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but right. yeah, no, uh, we mentioned this on Saturday, uh, this uh, yeah. little roundup of the numbers. But yeah, I I got thinking during this uh, start of the week. It's like, okay, why are VMs so low? Because you saw it the graphs yeah. at the beginning. It's like, TD had a little bit of VMs. Why? And then I thought, oh, it's Ubuntu. Yeah, of course you'd be running yeah. something that's a bit more, you know, efficient. 
a on lighter virtual weight. Yeah. Uh, machines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right on, right on. Let's get small, Ant Man. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. So yeah. uh, let's get small and let's get pointless. Because at this point, I think we hit the peak. Why do you call everything that's not Microsoft Edge pointless? <laughs> no, Edge is pointless. Listen, uh, man, I saw your no stickers at the beginning it. of the show, you, you Linux <laughs> lover. I mean, yeah, the sticker is still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, yeah. uh, no, I do not love Edge. And I certainly question the um, the existence of this particular TD Tiny Little Browser, which uh, just provides mm-hmm. the bare minimum of what you would call a browser. Dude, listen. You have... All right, first of all, it's got some great, listen, features. Uh, Min <laughs> yes. uses an older version of Chromium, which may be missing security <laughs> fixes from later versions. How can you? Mm-hmm. W- you wouldn't buy that for a dollar? N- no, no, I wouldn't. Because you know Monster. what? That spells that spells Electron. Yes. Someone yes. looked at the Electron framework and said, oh, that's built from a browser. You know what we could build with that? A browser. <laughs> a browser. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> so, but, and it's so bare bones, you have to actually question why exactly are you using one gigabyte of RAM to give me an address bar and a what is basically the equivalent of a mobile display render of a web page. What? Why? Yeah. Why do you Seriously? always hate yeah. everything? Why? <laughs> you know, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, lots of distros and window managers over the years come with minimal web browsers to view help files and documentations and such, including Gnome's Epiphany and XFCE's Midori. And But what, what I found interesting is this one does not offer bookmarking. I mean, what? What's that about? Even <laughs> even Dillo, Lynx, Elinx, W3M, and Browse do that on the terminal. <laughs> so that was... Yeah, I'm like, I can't get around not having my bookmarks. <laughs> I it's tried a it. browser. I yeah. downloaded it. I installed it. Pedro is going to repeat himself like nine more times, but I'm going to try to get in a few words. Yes. Uh, it's got a dev package. So I was like, fine. No harm, no foul. Put it in, launched it up. I'm like, all right, that's the thing. Went to a web zone, our web page. It worked fine. I was like, okay. Went to back. Oh, man, the forward and back navigation buttons on my dribble (laughs) didn't work. (laughs) Immediately uninstalled it, man. (laughs) Yeah. That that's got to be there. That, that that's part of the yeah. future. But it does have built-in ad and tracker blocking. It's got a fuzzy mm-hmm. search and full text search for visited pages. Yes. So, uh, yeah, and it uses DuckDuckGo. So yeah, it it, it is certainly it is... privacy minded. But it's yes. a browser built on Electron. Yeah. Now we can quit making the joke. That's what you're really upset about, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> We've hit. The bottom. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Oh, boy. Oh, no. We can go down yeah. son. <laughs> H-Top. We know it. We love it. And it's our favorite piece of kit. Uh, and top of the H. Yes. Here's how to customize it. Uh, where does this come from? Um, Hayden James. All of this is going to be in our show notes. So go check that out. Kind of uh-huh. walking through, basically pressing F2 on H-Top. If you don't know about it. You can do Mm -hmm. a gang of adjustments. It is highly customizable, and I highly recommend install it. Canonical. Why is it not installed by default? We were having that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But you can do a bunch of stuff like detailed (laughs) CPU usage lines. Um, You can do trees. You love trees, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's one of the first things I I do in in the options is use tree view and detailed CPU time under the display options. Because um, I, I, I like visually, I think it's easier to look at that way. <laughs> no, I like keeping and, that um, and I've been using yeah. HTOP uh, ever <laughs> since I was like, hey, this is a thing. And it's like, oh, my God. This... A lot of people don't bother to customize it. And, I mean, you can do everything yeah. from changing your colors to how it organizes priority from CPU load. I mean, a gang of stuff. And one thing you might not know is because, mm-hmm. like, oh, well, I got it launched in a virtual terminal on my desktop. You can use your dribble. Yes, it yes. works. You can just click on stuff. I was like, wait a minute. And what? curses. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah, no, yeah, it's it... uh, HTOP is the first thing or among the first things I install whenever I do like 
a fresh installation of any distro. It's like, okay, I need my H top because if something goes wrong or if something is eating up the processor, I need to see what it is. Mm -hmm. And there it is. You get all the information, including the ones that you're not entirely sure what that means, but it's nice to have it. Well, again, that's why yeah. having the option to go back and forth between tree viewers, like, all right, where's that yep. coming mm -hmm. from? Yeah, and exactly. I think we all realize you don't have uh when you install htop is when you realize it's not installed you're like what all right yes yeah Let's get that well i also customize a uh, top and you can customize that as well with key commands like uh, using lowercase e and uppercase e allows you to change the colors of top so it's not just black and white and i've been doing that for years actually <laughs> yeah no so i found that, that out by so mistake awesome. because i accidentally mm -hmm. hit uh zed it's like oh Oh, as with, yeah, man, a lot of commands get found that way. If you want to find out like some weird, bizarre, undocumented features, have like a, yes. wait till one of your mouse buttons starts getting a little jumpy on the micro switch. Oh, yeah. You will uncover all a like, gang of stuff. Like, what? I didn't oh, even know triple click do does that. Right. Huh. Yes. It's like, oh, why? oh, clearly you just uh, click on it four times in succession on Tuesdays after 4.30. That is, I had no idea. That's a thing. Hey, if you like yeah. the nonsense, consider funding it. Mm -hmm. You can support us at linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. Click on that button. Uh, become one of our patrons. Get access to your own customized RSS feed, early access to our shows for the live streams and a gang of other stuff up to and including you get to hang out with us like the other six days of the week where we're in Discord and we're talking. We're not talking about you. We're talking about each other. It's a surprisingly polite, mm -hmm. interesting uh, collection of people that I really like. There's over 100 people in there. And interesting is definitely the word. Eclectic. Aww. Eclectic. Aww. And eccentric. Nerd, nerd. They're awesome. And it, it, it's fun. I'm always in there. Pedro's in there. It, just mention Pedro because mm -hmm. I'm sure he does. He, he scans and sees anybody's talking about it. Oh, him. yeah. No, I, 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 yeah. I keep an eye on it. I may not say much, but I keep an eye on it. It is kind yeah. of brilliant. It is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some Amazon links. If you're like, screw that patron thing, man, I don't trust that, which you should. Patron's a cool place. Um, if you're going to buy stuff anyway, we get a little taste of that. What else have we got? Humble. Humble this week. Yeah. Ooh. Brand new bundle that I will actually recommend. Um, we got an affiliate link yes. too if you want to kick some change on that. But Mad Max, uh, Shadow of Mordor, and a game that works very well in Proton, as <laughs> I discovered, was the uh, Batman Origins. I wonder yep. if this works in Proton. Three hours later, it's like, yeah, I guess that works in Proton pretty well. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's put down that crack cocaine. <laughs> Hi, YouTube, for editing our video. Um, yeah, and now right. we're demonetized. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the, uh, the Warner Brothers bundle, and those are actually very nice games. If for some reason you don't have uh, Shadow of Mordor, or the um, the Mad Max. Mm -hmm. This is your bundle. This is the one you need to buy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and help support good. LGC as you do it. <laughs> yes, it's kind of brilliant. There will be an affiliate link in the show notes. It keeps us rolling in pennies, and as always, <laughs> get your name in the credits and all that fun stuff. It keeps us from having to do ads, and I really like being able to do all that we do. You know, we're broadcasting four days a week, and it's all with your support. And no mattress ads. It's brilliant. No. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, open up your mouth tube. It's time for a slice of pie. Yay, Just the one teeny tiny pie. little slice of pie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's coming through and it's Aww. invading your brain meats with electro and it has a hat. waves. Right. <laughs> yes, it has a hat. It's it's yummy raspberries with a hat. <laughs> so this is the Raspberry Pi TV hat or hardware attached on top. As we've you know talked about in previous LWWs, these are the Raspberry Pi hats, and this one is an add-on board that lets you receive digital DVB T2 TV streams on your Raspberry Pi. But there is a that's catch. a coax connector. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we used to use those years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, hang, <laughs> still on, hang, use on, them. hang on, hang on. I hate to interrupt you, Joel. How do you get TV <laughs> signals from the Sky Pedro without a coax cable. I want to know your method. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just going. It's like it's a Raspberry <laughs> Pi with a coax connector. 
Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No. N- well. Okay. Just, just. Just. All right. I. I too many places to go. As yeah. you were, Jill. As you were. <laughs> oh no problem. I've yeah. I've used coax for years, including in the old uh, analog video editing days. Okay. So, but this is this is really cool because you can either watch TV or stream it over the network. And obviously, you wouldn't want to use your Raspberry Pi Zero because it's not quite as powerful, <laughs> not quite quite powerful enough to to view the signal. But, um, but wait a you minute, Jill. What streaming. if I live in a country where people play football with exactly. their hands? So this is what I was going to uh, <laughs> let Ven and Pedro talk about. There is a catch to this <laughs> to watching TV on the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> there are many catches to this one. Yes. Uh, there is one in Portugal. So uh, all the lovely uh, Portuguese people watching us right now, hola. How you doing? Um, so basically, if you live in Portugal or any of the countries that have already abolished TV licenses, you can easily set this up and not have to worry about anything. You just go ahead and watch TV through your Raspberry Pi. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you could uh, get your brother to set it up and set mm-hmm. up a Plex box with like live stream service and maybe yeah I'd have yeah. to do that myself it's like just install this and give me the password that okay, is not I a man it. with a lot of faith in his younger son <laughs> okay, um, he's not a tech person <laughs> I think it's neat and DVB2 yeah that's not available in North America but hey uh, yeah. maybe we'll get you know there's OTA solutions I'm sure on the oh, yeah. Way. That will be coming, oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I, for one, don't watch TV. It, I'm that hipster. Ha. <laughs> uh, and, and it's inexpensive, you know, just over 20 bucks. So that's, you know, a really nice option because you know how much the uh, companies uh, gouge for TV cards you, uh, you could for your absolutely, computer. Well, right. <laughs> so, that, that, this is yeah. a wicked cheap way to get that into your yeah. system. Yeah. Or, like, if you have a friend in North America and you don't like them very much, Get it for them for the holidays and give them false hope. It's like, there yeah. you go, watch TV through your pie, but this doesn't work here. Shut up. Wait You're doing minute. it wrong. All right. Um, <laughs> this has been fun. This has been great. But we need mm-hmm. to give everyone a chance to get a hold of us. Pedro, do they yes. want to do that? Is that a good idea? Would you recommend it? It's a... It's a, an idea, questionable at best, but it's certainly an idea. And you can go to linuxgamecast.com to voice your very own concerns with that idea by hitting the contact button. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box, fill out the rest of the form, and uh, tick uh, Come to the bed, uh, honey. Google no. Captcha. No, someone was <laughs> wrong on the internet. Yes, we will totally <laughs> indulge you in if you, ha- if you call us out on something that you think we got wrong. We will absolutely indulge you. You will probably not like it, but you would like it a lot less if it was for a Saturday show. Don't, don't go for that. Don't go for something we got wrong. Go for the thing that we got wrong Ist. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Simplify it for the people. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yeah, the, the thing that we were absolutely off base. <laughs> or maybe you just want to get in touch with us and talk about, like, what do you have a project going on? Would you like to come on yes. the show? We would like to have you on the show and talk about your project. Oh, yes. Look at that. I know, be a, a dozen of adoring <laughs> listeners, and it'll be awesome. It'll be real. Yes. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Coming up first this week is from Eric. Oh, oh, also, you can leave comments on Patreon. That's a great way to do it. The contact form, best way to do it. Mm-hmm. YouTube, if we're scraping, we might go to YouTube mm-hmm. and check it out. But, I mean, we will get back to you on YouTube, so feel free to leave a comment there. Just It'll probably be more conversational than anything yeah. else. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, first up is Eric, as Ben said. Okay. When you have kids, screensavers are the... Um, yeah, redacted. Uh, they love <laughs> seeing randomly changing lines going across the screen. And this, yes. is, this came about because uh, we were <laughs> talking about week, screensavers yeah. last week. Yeah, and to th- Eric's point here, I say, um, video games? Have you heard of this thing called video games? You are going to make an absolute SH star T parent, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> no, it's like if yeah. your kid is into uh, computers and you see that they actually like, you know, the random lines going across the screen, introduce them to video games. By all means, be a responsible parent and help them uh, understand and guide them and, well, chaperone them. Uh, but introduce them to video games 
the, the interactive art medium. <laughs> Please. Aww. But, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> if they're uh, laying in their in their cribs, it's a good distraction for the really young ones, for the infants. <laughs> Touch screens. Yes. I know people who use them. <laughs> little screen savers, little animations. What, what are you going to do? Like, like hang a laptop over their head and hope for the oh, best? Oh, I know people who've done that. Oh. Yeah. Man. Oh, I like that. The nihilist in me just loves that. Yeah, that, that sounds like some people you need to call CPC on. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess that's like one thing if kids like looking at blinky lights. We all like looking at blinky lights. So, uh, yes. yeah, games, but maybe you don't want, you know, screensavers cheaper than video games, Pedro. Mm -hmm. Got you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. There are so many free, free to play games, though, <laughs> yeah. especially on Android. Up next, Charlie writes mm -hmm. about Plex. He's Charlie. like, hey, man, so I'm listening to the most recent LWDW, you poor, poor soul. And it makes me wonder. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you know a way to integrate a bug tracker with Plex, question mark. E.g., that stands for an example, people quit using IE. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. <laughs> I downloaded... Oh, kudos on you, Charlie, for doing that. I love it when people get the language correct. Um, <laughs> downloaded show is corrupt. A movie was mm -hmm. erroneously captured in a language I don't speak. I could just click a button in the interface and generate a ticket to deal with later and not ultimately forget about. Oh, you want a bug tracker for yourself? Mm -hmm. um, post-it notes? Mm -hmm. D literally grab <laughs> a physical block of post-it notes, write down what happened, stick it on like the bezel of your screen, and it'll always be there. It's like, oh yeah, I gotta deal with that. You know All what, right. Pedro? I think Charlie <laughs> might have thought of that. I think he may he yes. might be looking for a more automated or... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he specifically says integrate a bug tracker into Plex. Uh, mm. There are, depending on which browser you're using, if you're using a browser to, uh, at all to uh, use the Plex video thingy. Yeah. Um, if you are using a browser, there are several extensions that allow you to have that. And some yes. of them even have like keyboard shortcuts that you can just... Uh, hit that keyboard shortcut, a little teeny tiny little window shows up that you can type stuff into, and it'll stay there. It'll give you a reminder. It's like, you have one note, or you have one thing. So, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's just yeah, a matter that, of looking. That was my suggestion, too, is just to, to, to use one of the plugins or extensions. That could definitely be a thing. Uh, hmm. I find myself using Plex less and less and less now that more things are available streaming i mean like five years ago if i wanted to watch stargate in the background mm -hmm. that I was like okay yeah go to the plex box <laughs> and we do that now it's on amazon like it's it. on netflix and a lot of things are like that yep. yeah very rare and i don't really have the time to watch movies anymore so yeah no i will watch a movie sometimes on a weekend while I'm playing a video game and I'm just, I, the audio is there. It's on taking up mm -hmm. the, like the entirety of one of the monitors. And I'm like, okay, there's a movie. And if they say something that catches my attention, it's like, ooh, all right. right. Cool. <laughs> and I go back to the video game. <laughs> Jill, what are your thoughts? Do you still use Plex? Yeah. Um, um, actually, yes, I do. I, I, I do because, Monster. well, for, yeah. <laughs> Loving proprietary <laughs> software, there I, are open fact, source alternatives. I, I've been using it to watch Doctor Who with for the game of Who on Sunday. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I stream it, so. Whatever. <laughs> That's it. All right, beautiful people. We're going to bounce out of here. Uh, thanks for joining us live. Uh, if you don't join us live, you're probably listening to us because that's where 99% of you are. Thanks for doing that. We also have a video version on YouTube. Yes, that's right. We have a YouTube channel. We forget to mention it Yay. always. You can go check out and subscribe and ring the bell. Uh, maybe if you've rung the bell, we were talking before the show went live. YouTube decided mm -hmm. to change. Like if you have notifications for like always notify me. They, mm -hmm. they went and changed that on yeah. me. They changed it on Jill and not just for yes. our own stuff, but check all your stuff. Forget about us. I mean, go check your important shows, the good ones. Yeah. And Aww. that'll be a thing. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, as they say here, that's a bell and move, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> let's roll one, credits. <laughs> Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, thank you to our beautiful yeah, executive no, 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 producer. No, you should have said thank you, Vince Stone. You had it right, Joe. Yes. You, you stopped. No. <laughs> thank you, Vince Stone. Thank you, Peyton. What are you Lucas. talking about, thank Ben? Thank you, Jill Bryan. Uh, Jill, uh, Jill called you an idiot earlier in the show. <laughs> no, I <laughs> an appearance on LWDW. That's a rare treat. <laughs> Coming out. We have no episode number. <laughs> Coming out from his coffin. <laughs> Bye, chat realm. Bye. <laughs>